Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a working football in Roblox. So let's get straight into it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit view and open up the properties and explorer. I've taken a model for a football pitch and I'll leave that model in the description. So first thing we need to do is we need to make the actual ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a part and I'm going to add in a sphere. I'm just going to put the sphere there and I'm going to make the size maybe 2, 2 and 2. Just so it's relatively big. Now you'll have to play with the size yourself to make sure you get it right, but for me that'll be okay. I'm not going to worry about meshes and texturing the ball too much, I'm just going to rename it, right click and rename, or F2, and I'm just going to call it ball. Now we need to add in a server script into this ball, and we need to write some code. Now first thing we want to do is reference this ball, so local ball equals script dot parent that will allow us to access this ball lots of times throughout the script without having to say script dot parent all the time use script dot parent because the script is inside the ball so to access the ball we say script dot parent because the ball is the parent of the script say local attached equals false this will be a boolean to decide whether or not the ball is already attached to a player and we'll make another one called local speeding equals false. And this will help with velocity later on. Next we need to make a speed variable and we're gonna I'm gonna set it to 25 for now, but you can set it to whatever you want. You'll kind of see how this will play out later. But this speed variable will be the speed the ball will go when you shoot it. Next we need to call a function so when the ball is touched by the player, the ball will be connected to the player so the player moves with the ball. So to do that, we need to set up a script.parent.touched function. To do that, we simply type script.parent.touched colon connect function. And then in here, we need to put hit. Hit will be the part that touches the ball. If attached equals equals false, then, because we only want to attach the ball to the player if it's not already attached to someone, local player equals game.players colon get player from character and then in these brackets we'll type in hit dot parent this will get the actual player from the hit so what we can do then is say if player then and this is where we'll put all our main code in here this will only call this code if a player exists and it's not like the ground that's touched it so let's get on with the main functionality we only want this ball to attach to the player's foot right or left foot so what we can do is say if hit dot name equals right foot or hit dot name equals left foot then we'll say attached equals true because now we want the ball to be attached to the player so to actually attach it we need to say ball dot parent equals hit this will set the ball to the foot and then we need a for loop. So for i, comma v in pairs, hit colon get children, and then do. So what this will do is for each item within the hit, which in our case will be the foot, for each item inside of the foot, we're going to run through it and run this piece of code. The i is the index of the item within the foot, and the v is the actual object. And you'll see why in a minute. Because we need to say if v colon is a motor 6d, then this is what allows us to weld the ball to the player. So to do this, we need to clone this motor 6d because each body part has a motor 6d. So we need to clone a previous one that already exists and then set it, set the parent of it to the ball. Now, each motor 6D has a part 0 and a part 1. So to work with this, we need to say new V dot part 0 is going to be equal to the ball. And then new V dot part 1 is going to be equal to the ball dot parent. Okay, now before we can test this, we need to go to game settings, hit avatar, and make sure the avatar type is R15. And click yes. This will convert everyone's players to R15, which allows us to actually have feet. Because otherwise we don't actually have the feet, so we can't. So now if we do it, it will work. So yeah, as you can see, the ball attaches. Now, 
if we run around the ball it stays with us but we can't release the ball or anything it's kind of stuck to our feet now as you can see if we go into so this is my left foot if we go to the left foot the ball is here we've got this motor 6d constraint and part zero is the ball part one is the left foot which is exactly how we wanted now depending on the size of your ball you may get some weird behavior where you're kind of like above the floor or kind of standing like this there's not really much you can do to fix that unless you can play around with the size of the ball now we need to make some ui so let's go into start a gui and i'm going to add a screen gui inside this i'm going to add in a text button and i'm going to call it shoot this text button i'm going to put bottom right of the screen and i'll make it about that big and i'm going to rename the text to shoot now let's add in a local script into here and what we're going to type in this local script is script dot parent dot mouse button one click colon connect function now we need to go up to replicate storage click add and add in a remote event now i'm just going to call this shoot ball for now so we can go and now type game dot replicate storage dot shoot ball colon fire server like so now what this will do is when we click the button it's going to fire this remote event which we can then capture within this script inside the ball here and react to it. So let's say game dot replicate storage dot shoot ball dot on server event colon connect function. And then we need to add in the player in here because we're calling this from a client script, a local script. The player will automatically be passed into this event. So we have to put the player in here. So now back into our ball script. What we need to do now is if attached equals equals true, then because we only want to run this code if the ball is attached. If ball dot parent dot name is equal to right foot, then we want to say ball dot right ankle colon destroy. That's because if it's on the right foot, the motor 6D is going to be called right ankle. So we want to destroy it. This will allow the ball to be shot off from our foot. Now we want to add an else if ball dot parent dot name equals left foot, then ball dot left ankle colon destroy. Because if it's on our left foot, the motor 60 will be called left ankle, so you want to destroy it. Now we want to actually make the ball shoot off with velocity. So to do that, we need to say ball dot parent equals workspace as this will take it away from the player so it's not parented under the player anymore it's not a child of player then ball dot can touch is going to be set to false which stops it from glitching and moving onto our other leg as soon as we shoot it and then we need to give it velocity so ball dot velocity equals player dot character dot humanoid root part dot c frame dot look vector times by speed now this looks complicated but what this is doing is it's shooting the ball at a certain speed in the direction of the player so wherever the player is looking is where the ball is going to be shot off to and then we need to set speeding equals true and we're going to come back to that speeding variable in a minute we're then going to wait half a second just to give the server time to catch up and then we'll say ball dot can collide equals true now you can lower this number within the weight, but I'm going to keep it as it is. And then we need to set attached to false because it will no longer be attached to anything. Now we need to add one more thing at the bottom, which will be while weight 0.1 do. because So this means that every tenth of a second, it's, we, we don't want to do it like that because otherwise it will happen too often. It will happen like each frame and it's just too much. We want to say if speeding equals true then ball dot velocity plus equals vector three dot new 0 0.1 0 0 and then end and then we're going to say if ball dot velocity dot x is bigger than zero or ball dot velocity dot z is bigger than zero then speeding equals false now basically this code allows the ball to slow down over time if we hit play this shoot button is going to be down here we can't actually shoot yet but if we grab the ball and then shoot as you can see it will shoot off quite slowly but it will slow down over time as you can see it slows down 
Now, the reason we are adding a vector 3 here is because when we're timing it by the speed, it will be a negative vector. So we add to cancel that out. That's hard to explain the maths behind it, but just trust me, it works. If for whatever reason it speeds up here rather than slowing down, just change that to a minus. But it should it should slow down like this. So anyway, there's one last bit of code we want to add. Let's go over to our shoot button and under properties, make it invisible. And then we can go back onto our ball script and where we've got our script or parent or touched. Under the third end, we want to say player dot player GUI colon wait for child screen GUI dot shoot dot visible equals true. And this will set the shoot button to true. Now, of course, another thing we want to do is under the actual once we've fired the server, we want to say script dot parent dot visible equals false under the actual button. So now if we test it, you'll see we can walk into the ball, we can shoot it, and as you can see it's not very fast, so you may want to speed it up a little bit. And I've got a problem, I can't reattach the ball for some reason, so let me fix that. That is because we've put can collide equals true here on line 41, this should be can touch equals true. So let me fix that, and click play here. Now as you can see I can pick it up, and I shoot it, it moves quite slow at the minute but we can fix that. I'm going to pick it up again, run over, but as you can see, we can't see the UI this time. Now, why is that? What I'm going to try doing is moving this script.parent.visible equals false from the shoot script into this ball script. And I'm going to put it just before we set attached equals false. I'm also going to copy this line here from line 23 and paste that onto line 42 where we've just added this thing and we'll set that to false and that should work now so as you can see I pick it up, I can shoot it and it goes backwards, that is just a can collision glitch if you shoot it, it will go the right way and as you can see when we pick it up, the, ball, the button does come back I'm gonna lose it no, it's gonna slow down, hopefully it slows down enough come on, stop, 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 Ah, oh, and it's fallen off brilliant, as you can see we can shoot it and we pick it back up and the shoot button is back. There we go. And as you, if I go first person, you'll see it better. If I aim over here, the ball shoots over there. And that's it. You've got your gameplay right here. And the ball should slow down. I believe it does. You may want to adjust the settings. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm starting to catch up with it. It just takes a long time to slow down. As I say, you can adjust like the velocity here. If we make that like 1, it's going to slow down a lot quicker. I'll show you that. So let's shoot it, and it's slowing down, it's already pretty much at zero. Remember, if you're changing it to one or whatever, if you're changing any of those vector numbers, make sure to change the Z, which is the third number in the brackets as well, not just the X, which is the first, because that's what I did in this tutorial and completely forgot, so sorry about that. So everyone, with that, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe, as it really helps out the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. So thank you for watching everyone and goodbye.